Well, hello, hello, everybody. Welcome back to Cocktails and Rocktails with Notorious Groupie, Allison Rouse. That would be me. For you guys just stumbling onto my channel, I am the author of this little book, We've Got Tonight, The Life and Times of Notorious Groupie, Me. That's right, folks. Only half the story. Some things I don't tell in the book, I put here. Some things in the book, I don't tell here. So go down in that description Check out the links where you can get my book, my merchandise, everything, the drink of the day, the beer of the day, whatever. Check out all the links in the description. And as always, thank you everybody for all the love and support you've given me on this channel and all the amazing friends that I'm making and the people that I'm seeing are meeting. You guys are fucking awesome. Thank you so much. And especially Lynn Purvis, thank you for all the love and support you've given me all these years. You rock, hun. Okay, and speaking of you guys and the support and the love, this is a yet another inspired by one of you guys' videos by a couple people because somebody asked me outright to do this subject and then another person kind of said something afterwards that was like, oh yeah, so we are going to talk about the lion, the bitch, and the wardrobe chick. That's right. Who is that? That would be James Hetfield, me, well, wardrobe chick includes a few people because, well, that's his habit. So, and today, we're pouring up the birthday soup by Uinta, one of our locals. You guys can definitely find this in your grocery stores, so go hit them up. These guys fucking rock. All right, everybody, grab your birthday suits, kick up your feet, and let's have a little cocktails and rocktails, shall we? Cheers, big ears. Mm-mm-mm. So good. It's a really great apricot, apricot sour. So well balanced. Just that really perfect tinge to it. So good. All right. So the lion, the bitch, and the wardrobe chick. We're going to start off with the story about the original wardrobe chick because James has a habit of dating wardrobe chicks. And it actually applies currently as well. So Back in the day, um, starting around the Unjustice Tour, they had a wardrobe chick named Allie, of all things. Um, she had a little bit of a thing with James, because James's thinking is kind of along the lines of, oh, she tours with me, she gets this life, she gets everything, she's here with me so I can trust her, I don't have to worry, blah, blah, blah. So he finds comfort in dating a wardrobe chick and this chick just happened to be Allie but when they came to Salt Lake City or he had a met a groupie or had another groupie in another city of course he would wander off with her so that must have sucked with that for Allie and it definitely sucked when she was in Salt Lake City because there was one night in particular we had been hanging down at the Marriott Hotel bar and it we closed it down and it was like, oh, well, let's just go up to the just-in-case room and keep the party going. You know, it's only 2 o'clock in the morning. We all want to keep going. We're young. We're crazy. We're free. We're drinking. We're having a great night. Lars is doing his coke. Because <laughs> that's Lars. Watch his, watch his uh, 80s and 90s uh, when he does interviews. He does that in his interviews. It's fucking hilarious. That's how you tell he was on coke in the 80s. So anyway, we decided... Because it's Salt Lake City, we can't get booze just 24 hours a day because they are state-owned liquor stores. No privately-owned liquor stores that would be open 24-7. So we decide we're going to go raid the buses. Ian, James, every, a couple other people go upstairs. Dougal the Wonder Roadie. Um, Flemmy, who passed away recently. Oh, Flemmy, sorry. R.E.P., dude. But anyway... So there's a few of us in this room, not like a big party, just that handful of road click, our little, our little crowd that hung around each other. So we come upstairs and we've got the cart full of, you know, booze and whatever we could find on the bus to mix it with and everything. And as we come in the room, James is sitting at one of the two chairs by the side table. You know how every hotel room has that little table with the two chairs? Well, he was sitting there, but at his feet ever so her hands draped over his knee, her chin, ever so 
perfectly placed, looking up at him, adoring James and worshipping him, was the wardrobe chick, Allie. She did have a friend with her that night. Rumor had it was because James liked to have a little threesome and that was kind of his favorite thing to do at the time. So, but his favorite thing to do that night was me. So when I walked into the room, there she is sitting at the feet, the, his, her friend sitting at the other chair, and James looks up and sees me, and he just kind of pushes her away. She falls backward, and he gets up and walks across, across the room to me. Which didn't bother me, because Allie and I didn't get along for obvious reasons, but I didn't know. James knew, so don't be mad at me. I didn't know you. they were having their little road thing and whatever, so she hated me from that night on forward, but... Here's the problem with dating someone on the road that you're involved with, because they don't always work out. And of course, if you're sleeping with other groupies while you're sleeping with the wardrobe chick, she's gonna get pissed, she's gonna get testy, there, shit, shit's gonna hit the fan. You don't play with fire like that. If you're fucking someone on the road that's part of your crew, just be fucking them, or part of your backup singers or dancer or whatever, don't be, oh, here, not tonight, sweetie. I've got this really hot groupie I'm, I'm with, or Allison's here, or whatever, my, my road wife, whatever. So she kind of got a little bitchy. And like I talk about, the black tour was the Bermuda Triangle for Metallica. Like when they lost the passion to be the band, and the ego started taking over, and they lost some crew members, including Ian Jeffries. But I honestly don't know. If Allie, I think she was out on the Black Tour. I know that at the end of the Injustice Tour, things with Allie and James and the rest of the band and stuff were getting real tense because she was getting real bitchy and angry and hurt. And, and rightfully so, I get that, you know. She thinks she's in this relationship with James, but yet they actually don't share a room every night. And... Someone else is in that room with him on other nights that she's not there. So I get that. You know, you get pissed, you get hurt, you get territorial, you get like, what the fuck are you doing with me, dude? You know, all that goes on in your head. So things got tense with her at the end of the And Justice Tour. And like I said, we were kept apart from each other So after that one night. So I don't know if she actually was on the Black Tour. I think she was. But... In Denver on the Black Tour, obviously, James met Fran backstage. I think she was doing catering or something. I don't know. I don't remember her. I was backstage. I was in Denver. We were hanging out with the boys. I only remember her from the first night after the first show because there was three shows in Denver. Well, James brought French Fran out on the road to be wardrobe. I don't know if it was his personal wardrobe or to be work with Allie if she was there, but I know within a month of um, her coming out, there would not have been any other Allie because that would have been too complicated because this is another woman, you know, like I said, James feels comfortable with this because he feels like the person gets the lifestyle, they get the road, they're out on the road together, so they have that camaraderie, that bond, that excitement, that adventure together, and they're not cheating, and he can be faithful to her, and so on, so on. So there's a lot of comfort James finds in this, but this just goes to don't cross your lovers. Don't have a previous thing with one wardrobe chick, and then bring out the girl you met and are sleeping with who eventually becomes your wife, to be the next wardrobe chick or your assistant. Oh, God. The drama. The drama. I mean, people wonder why me and Danny started falling off during the Black Tour. We hung out with them every time we were around them in different cities and stuff. During the Black Tour, obviously, the car wreck and everything. But we kind of started pulling away because... We saw the egos. We saw all this drama going on. And it's like, oh my God, we just don't want to deal with it. Which is, like I said, one of the reasons this is going to be the last Metallica 
video for a while because I don't want to deal with some of you people's drama. Like I said, 90% of the Metallica fans that I've met are awesome people. I love you guys. Keep it coming. I, I love most of you guys, but that 10%, yeah, chizzy, crazy. So it's the same kind of drama that I just don't want to deal with. So anyway, we feel this drama going on, so we kind of start pulling away, pulling away. James and Francesca, obviously they get married, they have kids. 30 years later, there's a new woman in the picture. And the pictures are still available on that video. Apparently they're not online anymore because, you know, people wake up, their kids are grown, they realize they don't have much in common, or they realize that before they decide to end their marriage or relationship or whatever, and discover text messages. I don't know. I don't know. There were rumors, but I don't know. Anyway, so they fall apart. They make the decision, which is really hard to break up your family and your marriage, and this person you've relied on for both of them, so that sucks completely. But this new woman, someone said to me, oh, she looks like this one person that works on the crew. And then right after she sent me that email, I was just like, well, that's typical of James. And she was like, oh, duh. She's day he's dated, he's known notorious for dating wardrobe chicks like I'm notorious for fucking rock stars, right? So, check out pictures of the crew. Maybe this is why they are so protective now of pictures backstage. Because this woman in question might be on the crew. Yeah. Yeah. So, the lion, the bitch, and the wardrobe chicks. Oh, my God. Like I said, you cannot make up a novella. A novella like this. It's crazy. Because can you imagine being Fran and then realizing because Fran didn't know, I'm sure. And if Allie was on the black tour, because like I said, I did not see her. They kept us apart from each other. Because, yeah, that night that he knocked her off of his knee, like her and her friend, not five minutes later, just stormed out of that room and slammed the door. There was something said by Lars, of course, because Lars is always the one to say it. <laughs> I love Lars. But, um, and James just really, he did not care. You know, and like I said, these are the dangers in getting involved with someone on the road. Okay, the second wardrobe check, that worked out for 30 years almost. So that was cool. And they were great, and she got the road, and, you know, they had their family, and they were camaraderie and had a really great love. But like I said, sometimes that fades, and when you're out on the road, and you need a, a ego pick me up or a, something to make you feel better when you're depressed and sad and lonely and that happens, that's a huge, huge risk. Way bigger risk than any of his groupies, right? Happening. So James's new girl, that would be absolutely typical. She may be on the crew. You guys wanna know? I have a lot of people who are coming to me being sluice, you know, and stuff like this. And so there's, there's another clue, but you know what? James is going to announce it. It's going to come out sooner or later. And I think it's coming out sooner. I think it'll come out before September of this year. I think he'll just appear in public and not even care with her because obviously by these pictures before he thought he could have privacy and no, they didn't so yeah James does have a habit of dating the wardrobe girls marrying one of them and having a life and family you know and that's fine to each their own I guess but you know only I think out of the third time is not the charm obviously second time of dating the wardrobe chick was the charm so third time might be playing with fire and if you didn't learn anything from dating Allie and the drama that came with it and the slammed doors and the dirty clothes and the ripped pants and everything you had to go through. Oh boy. Have fun with this crew chick. But anyway, there you guys go. Kind of took a little bit of a spin that you didn't expect, did it? <laughs> 
So like I said, that's just kind of James's habit. And yeah, he did date a wardrobe chick, Allie, who years and years later on the now defunct Groupie Central website that I talk about from the early, early 2000s, um, there was a Metallica thread and there was someone on there under the name of James Hetfield's ESP, his guitar. And it was definitely Allie. And then once she realized it was me, because we were going back and forth, I'm like, no, you know, blah, 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 blah. This is, they didn't do this. They didn't call. And she was like, and then I was like, wait a minute. And it took me like a couple weeks of, of going back and forth with this chick to realize that, oh my God, I know who this is by something she said. I was like, that's fucking Allie. And I called her out. I was like, oh, Allie. Question mark, question mark, question mark. You should know me. We share something more than just James in common. Salt Lake City, question mark, question mark, question mark. Oh, blam, done. She never spoke to me again. So I think that was Allie, to be honest. And I don't know whatever happened to her after that tour. I would like to know, and I hope she had a great life because, you know, she really didn't deserve as much as I didn't like her and we sparred. It was because the one thing that was, I talk about, don't blame the groupie or the, or the woman at home or the wardrobe check. Blame the rock star that's creating the drama between them, the friction. And that's why we hated each other. But you know what? Yeah, that, that sucked that she had to go through that. Probably falling in love with James like, a, like I was, like she was, like Fran did, like this new wardrobe check or whoever she is may be doing. You know, it's like, oh, okay, have it. I'm stepping back. <laughs> oh, I'm stepping back. So there you go. Tell me what you guys think down in the comments. Seriously. You know, you'd think you'd want to step out like Vinnie Paul used to date nothing but bleach blonde, boob job, big haired Texas chicks until he met me. And he brought... Whoa, 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 whoa. I just spilled a little. Oopsie. But anyway... You think you'd want to broaden your horizons in the dating pool? Yeah, you do want someone who gets the road, who gets the life, that can hang out on the road, that you have fun with, that you trust to be in your life, and you want every second in your life. But really, I think I think once you married Fran, that was, and it's only going to go downhill from there, and this is going to blow up in his face. You watch. I mean, because it's a rebound dating, and it might have happened before the divorce happened. Text messages. I don't know. Just saying is all. Do with that what you will. Put your comments down in, or put your thoughts down in the comments. So thank you guys for listening to my babble today. I love you guys and appreciate you guys. Keep all the fucking awesome questions and everything coming because it does absolutely, absolutely, as we know, inspire half of my subjects and topics that I cover here. You guys fucking rock. Do not forget to hit the go down in that description like it's the 80s. Get on your knees and see what's happening down there. <laughs> all right. Thank you guys again for all the love and support. We will see you next time here on Cocktails and Rocktails with Notorious Groupie. Me. Ooh. Cheers, big ears. <laughs>